This episode of Funky Fitness Now is made possible by listeners like you. Get exclusive rewards and more by visiting funkyfitnessnow.com forward slash support. Funky Fitness Now, episode 49, Wicked Weird Winter Sports. Question, what if your butt doesn't fit on your shovel? Uh, you gotta get a bigger shovel. (laughs) Welcome to Funky Fitness Now, where every week we take a look at some of the creative, unusual, and crazy things people do to get fit. We have a lot of fun, and occasionally we even learn something. So fasten your weight belt. It's time for Funky Fitness Now. Here are your hosts, Steve Stearns and Jessica Bailey. Hi, and welcome to Funky Fitness Now, episode 49. I'm Steve Stearns from Outside Health and Fitness, and I am really excited that you're here tonight because we're going to be talking about wicked weird winter sports you know when it's icy and cold outside and you just have to find something fun to do these are the things that you could do and speaking of icy and cold my co-host from sassy girl fitness nyc jessica bailey speaking of icy and cold what well you just came back from vacation so you're not really icy and cold i'm really warm and and it's unseasonably warm in new york city today as we record. Yes, it is here too. It's like springtime. Yeah, so I'm not icy or cold. And icy and cold makes me sound like I'm a mean, mean lady. <laughs> and I am not a mean lady. You're not a mean lady. I know. That's true. It's just, what you know, it's those things. I just, I have to pick a couple of words and go, and speaking of those two words I said <laughs> before. <laughs> All right, so I won't take offense to it. Okay, good. On today's show, you're going to discover a new and insane winter sport. A better way to use your shovel this winter. And summer sports played in the wintertime. And a fantastic way to look good while breaking your leg. Sounds great. I can't wait to hear that one. Well, before we get started today, we want to make sure that you know that we're not endorsing any of the medicines, exercise programs, equipment, solutions, cuisines, or bells and whistles that we're sharing with you on the show. Excellent. That's right. And if you hear something that we're talking about and think it might be something you would like to try, we'd like you to check with your doctor first. It's always a good idea to get their okay before you start any new wicked exercise or diet plan. Have you ever heard of downhill ice cross? No, but it sounds awesome. It sounds awesomely scary. Okay. (laughs) It sounds like there's ice involved anyway. There is a lot of ice involved. Okay, so downhill ice cross is all that is insane about speed skating, hockey, and ski cross all rolled into one. Wow. So, the sport sees skaters decked out in full protective gear, barreling downhill a winding half a kilometer long ice track at 60 miles per hour. So, is this like, so this is kind of like, um, like motocross where they've got like four or five people jumping over these things at the same time. Exactly. Oh, awesome. What? I, I, okay. I get very, very nervous watching people doing insane things. Mm -hmm. And when I watched a video of this, I was like sweating. My heart was beating. (laughs) I had to stop the YouTube video like three times. It was only like, two minutes long it shouldn't be stopped three times for you to watch a two-minute video it was just too stressful this is going to be amazing though because then do they have like uh different types of skates that they use because they're like on ice skates right they look like they were on like the skates that you would wear for like hockey you know how they Uh they're a little bit more durable than like figure skating ice skates right right wow yeah you know in in hockey how they like come to a stop and they like they shred the ice, and mm-hmm. I don't know what the proper terms are, but they do like really cool, funky moves. It looked like that, and they're like <laughs> banging into each other and stuff the whole time. It's violent. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if they mean for it to be so violent, but it is violent. I bet. I bet it is. It's probably kind of like roller derby in a way, right? Every man for himself. So that sounds very exciting. So is this something that um, people just would would go and do on the weekend for fun or? Um, I guess. I don't know. Fun is a really weird term for you to use. Right. No. I'm thinking it's not a family thing. It's probably something that just the pros do. Yeah. It sounds like something that you should have a little bit of expertise in. I mean, I don't think this is something that you're like, hey, six-year-old daughter, let's go downhill ice crossing today. Yeah. (laughs) No. I mean, would you take your daughter or your son to do this? No. 
I might no, go well, see it, but not not to do it. Well, you can be a spectator. Yeah. Now I'll tell you one thing that I would I would try though is this shovel racing. Have you heard of that one? Ooh, shovel racing. Please shovel tell racing. me more. Yes. So all you really need is a shovel, which is fantastic because everybody has a shovel, right? If you live in a climate where there's snow, you have a shovel. Sure, that's right. You take a shovel, just like you would for regular, you know, snow shoveling, and you sit down on it with the handle kind of sticking out between your legs, put a helmet on, and boom, you're off. Zipping down an icy track, like a bobsled track. Instead of a sled, you're on a shovel. Yeah, it's crazy. And these guys are reaching like speeds of up to 70 miles an hour doing this. Question. What if your butt doesn't fit on your shovel? Uh, you got to get a bigger shovel, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, and do you wear snow pants? Yes, I would definitely wear snow pants because there's a lot of snow flying. But they, they were literally sitting on a regular shovel going down a like a bobsled run where it's like icy, crusty, turns, all that kind of stuff. It's just mental. The thing that I don't understand, though, is like the, I don't know if I would like to be going 70 miles an hour with the handle of a shovel sticking up between my legs. You know what I mean? Do you have to steer your shovel with this handle between your legs that could ultimately poke your eye out, but whatever? I'm, it's not my eye I'm concerned about. I don't think they steer with the, sh- the, the handle of the shovel. It's just kind of sticking up there. The only thing that I see them do with that is I pull up on it at the end to try to slow themselves down and stop. But I'm just thinking, like, if you hit, like, a bump and the shovel, I mean, it's right between your legs. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's a very precarious area. It's not an area where you want to get hit by the handle of a shovel. Oh, you don't want to knock your teeth out. That's what you're really concerned about, aren't you? Nope. I'm a (laughs) bit further south from there. It's not worried about my teeth or my eyes, actually. Oh, your stomach? Is that what you're worried about? Not quite. But you're getting closer. It seems like we're playing Marco Polo a little bit, but that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe I'm just trying to keep it PG. That could be. And good for you. That's right. If anyone said anything, I would obviously I would do a wee hoo kind of a sound effect, you know. Oh, good. Excellent. I'm glad you're on your game. Absolutely. All right. Have you ever heard of snow boating? Snow boating? No. Oh, it's also known as sky kayak. No, sky. Snow kayaking. Yes, actually, snow kayaking. I've actually done it. You can say that you've snow boated then because yes, it's okay. actually the same thing. You have? You've done this? Well, I, not on a professional level. I basically had a sit on top kayak that I took up behind the house because we have a kind of a hill behind the house. Got on it, headed down the hill. Picked up some pretty darn good speed, went right across the driveway into the front lawn, and I had to bail because I was about ready to go right into the road. But it was a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Were there cars coming? Uh, Would you have been killed? I don't know if I would have been killed. I'm not sure if there were cars coming or not, but I I did not want to go into the road for sure. That would not be a good example to set for your children. No. But a kayak, I mean, it's like basically a huge sled, so it's perfect for snow. Oh. Well, it's just like the summer sport where you kayak in a river, right? Right. Instead, you're kayaking on snow. And it's typically done in the backcountry, but Mm -hmm. occasionally at resorts or ski (laughs) areas. I'm sure they do it in, like, Colorado. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. Awesome. So they have races, and... They're look okay. Let me say this. I think there are like four kayakers. I don't know if they're called kayakers, but let's mm-hmm. call them kayakers. Let's do that. So there are four kayakers that race against each other, and the first two of each race will step forward to the next round. Ah, uh, so it's kind of like March Madness only in kayaks. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Sounds. I can't believe that you've done this. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> well, like I said, it was just you know it was one of those days where you kind of go, hey, there's snow out there, and What's my kayak doing? Hmm. You know, it's, it's just one of those stupid things that you do. But it was kind of fun. But I know what you mean. I mean, it's, I've seen some of the videos. These guys are really know what they're doing, right? Yeah. They, and it's really dangerous and scary. You know what, Steve? I'm going to write this down because this needs to be a diary entry. This is amazing. <laughs> what? Dear diary, today I have learned that Steve did something very dangerous. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good diary entry. Thank and you. You probably have one of those for every time we talk. I do have a lot of Dear Diary Steve is Crazy entries. Yeah. Crazy, dumb, something like that. 
All right, so let's stick with our winter theme, since that's the name of the show, right? Okay. So imagine this, if you will. There you are at your favorite ski resort, and you're riding up the lift with a bunch of your friends, when out of the corner of your eye, you see somebody twirling, whirling, flipping around on skis. And you kind of say to yourself, wait a second, is that a yard sale? Which is what we call it when someone crashes on skis and all of their stuff is displayed on the slopes. I don't think it is. It's someone doing ski ballet. That's what it is. They're just flipping and spinning around. I have never seen ski ballet. Is this the one that you're talking about where people can break their leg? Yes, in a beautiful way. This is one of these things that I've actually seen this too because when I, when I grew up skiing, uh, it was the 70s when I grew up skiing and uh, some of my friends got into this whole ski ballet thing which at the time was pretty popular. It, it had a really fast uh, run. Like it was extremely popular and now it's gone, you know, that kind of thing. But You know you- why it was really popular? Because it was very dangerous. All of these sports are dangerous. I sound like an old lady saying this. This one may sound dangerous, but if you see it, you'll go, yeah, okay, no. It just shouldn't be done. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's almost like figure skating on skis. Like they play music, they spin around, there's the dramatical you know, moves that they make, they mm-hmm. do the little dancing thing. I mean, they do some amazing stuff, don't get me wrong. I mean, they do like cartwheels on skis and flips and stuff like that, but... Yeah, it's kind of when you when you watch it, you go, yeah, okay, you know, it's just it's hard <laughs> to get into it, and it's a real '70s thing. Like everyone's got mullets and uh, pink and yellow costumes, and you know, <laughs> but I've got video, so I'm going to put it in the show notes so everyone can check it out. Ski ballet. I have another question. Okay, what are the costumes like? Are they clothed oh. or are they showing a lot of skin? Oh no, no, they're they're basically in ski outfits, you know. They're not showing any skin at all. If they were, it would be the fake stuff, kind of like they do with the figure skaters. So is it like bedazzled ski oh, yeah. outfits? Oh, yeah. Nice. Headbands. I like it. Puffy sleeves. Imagine what? any sort of fashion. Headbands? Oh, yeah. Tons of headbands. Guys, girls, it doesn't matter. Just for fashion, you should watch this. So I was thinking, this has nothing to do with winter at all, although ice could be involved. I was thinking about something that you could do that would help you be healthier and also save you money at the same time. And the first thing that popped into my mind was soda. You know what I mean? Okay. Please explain. So if you are someone that drinks soda on a regular basis, maybe you have one or two a day, it's really not that healthy for you because you're getting lots of sugar, which causes inflammation and different things like that. There's lots of calories in there. If you're someone that's trying to watch your weight, it's just not such a great thing to drink. So you could substitute that soda for water which would be better for you, right? Exactly. I Oh my God, I love you. This is amazing. Continue on. It's great stuff. Now, here's the other cool part though, is that you also could save money because water is free and soda costs money. We Neither of us have any idea how much soda costs because we don't drink soda. But I think, let's say it's a dollar a soda, right? If you have two sodas a day, that's 14, 15 bucks a week, $60 a month. <gasps> You could say when you said if you have two doll if you have two sodas a day, what is that? I was like two dollars. That's two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is why we don't do funky math now or something. No. But anyway, it's a lot of money. It would be sixty dollars a month if you were able to switch from soda to water, and you would be healthier too. And the cool part is, you could take some of that money that you save, and you could help us and support the show through our Patreon page. Ooh, I like how you think. So you know that we love doing Funky Fitness now and bringing you some more of the astonishing things and plans people are doing to stay fit and active. That's right, and we'd like to ask you for your support. That's why we've set up your Patreon page. When you become a Funky Fitness fan, you help make the show possible and you keep it ad-free. How cool is that? And on your page, you find some really awesome rewards like behind-the-scenes videos and bonus content. Yeah, and you'll get episodes before anyone else personalized videos, and a bunch of other cool, funky stuff. So visit funkyfitnessnow.com forward slash support and become a Funky Fitness fan now. We really do appreciate it. So, uh, Jessica, what do we have coming up next week? Okay. Okay. Remember this game that we played a few months ago called Funky or Fake? Yes. I love that game. (laughs) Me too. I love that game too. We're going to play it again. Woohoo! And this time we're going to talk about Funky or Fake championships 
You know, the things that people train for, Mm -hmm. like, you know, running championships or maybe you do something else. Anything you get a trophy for. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Steve Stearns. And I'm Jessica Bailey saying stay fit and funky. Thanks for listening to the show. If you haven't already, make sure you visit funkyfitnessnow.com for more of the weird, wild, and kooky things people do to stay fit. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter so you never miss an episode. See you next week. 